What's up, everybody? My name is X Juno Well, um, Assistant Curator at the Guggenheim Museum. Welcome to the second episode of the Artwork Anthology, Guggenheim's new online series exploring stories behind artworks in our collection. For this episode, I'm joined by artist Ad Menality to, to discuss their work in our collection, Mom Painted. We will be taking a few questions at the end of the conversation, so please feel free to use the chat box to submit questions and comments. Um, we have also included Ad Menality's bio and a few related references in the description box for your reference. Um, so without further ado, let's start the conversation. Hi, Ad. How Hi. are you? Where are Thank you? Thank you for having me. I'm in Buenos Aires in quarantine. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, I am in New York, also in quarantine. Um, I'm going to start screen sharing so that um, we can start our conversation. Can you see my screen? which on the left corner, upper left corner has the subject of our discussion today, which is your painting, Siri mm -hmm. Mom Painted. Um, and uh, as you know, this series of work, uh, Mom Painted, is featured in the June edition of Guggenheim Circular, for which I worked with my colleague, Levy Pombaum, um, on the topic of embrace. And this particular circular considers what it means to embrace the body, an idea, or radical differences. And simple physical gestures for support, like hugs, um, provide a temporary, temporary space of commonality. Also serve as a reminder that little can be achieved alone. So that um, we consider that to embrace another is to pass beyond the concern of the self and to consider what can be made possible through friendship, kinship, and other partnerships. And the first time that I participated in your work um, was in San Francisco for the Feminist School Project, Feminist School of Painting Project. Mm -hmm. And uh, from that experience, I began to really understand that the core of your practice is deeply collaborative and it always um, partnering or negotiating with different agents. And it decenters the kind of uh, artist at the sole author of the work kind of um, practice and also demystify the so-called artist as a genius, right? So mm -hmm. I think Mong Painted is a great example um, of type of working um, that I want to discuss with you today. And I maybe begin by asking a very simple question. How does it all started and uh, why hmm. you decided to work with your mom? Right. Well, I think there are many factors. Uh, first, becoming an artist in one side is, teach me that you always have to team up, you know, to create your own spaces, your stories. And I think we have a different approach compared to the development you have as an artist in other countries or in other contexts where mainly competition is more encouraged than cooperation. So also in this particular series, uh, when I had read the classic from Linda Nochlin, you know, why have there been no great woman artists? Um, I thought about the narrative of the, this genius um, and his father, like in the stories of Picasso, Orozco, or even Frida Kahlo, you know? But there are not many stories on what about the mothers and also mothers as introducers to art. And also in European art history, motherhood is a word you will never see related to abstraction or concrete art. Anymore. Yeah. So around 2016, 17, uh, my mom, uh, Cecilia Armendariz, was forced to retire because the neo neoliberal government at the, at the moment 
Just my mm -hmm. mom with my dad having fun. <laughs> They're so cute. <laughs> um, but then, yeah, at, at that time, the government used like retirement as a way to cut public work and fire people, basically. Mm -hmm. All part of the austerity plan organized by the aspiration for this series. Somehow it's the work of Ana Gallardo, mm -hmm. another Argentinian artist living in Mexico now. Um, her research about how to get all together or safe or cared using art, right? So both my parents are very creative, but with all these factors, it felt logical to ask my mom to work with me once you know she was retired. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, no, thank you so much for sharing. Um, I think that is, you're absolutely right. There is this inherent um, ageism and sexism that is in this capitalist patriarchal society that um, our value is intertwined with our labor production. And once you're no longer useful, you are forced to retire, even though many people feel like they can continue to work and contribute. And um, I think the work of Anna's is very important and it's often overlooked. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we should dive a bit deeper into that collaboration between you and your mom. Was mm -hmm. she a good collaborator? Yeah. <laughs> so tell us how you guys work together um mm -hmm. are you the boss or is she <laughs> the boss no actually she, she's the boss of course always <laughs> against all authority except my mom you know so there were a couple of conditions that i set up from the beginning like for mm -hmm. example the size of the work so it couldn't be like giant or something big. It has to be easy to paint because I didn't want to give her more back pain. Um, on the contrary, I wanted to give her something to do that relaxes her, mm -hmm. like the coloring book, you know, mm -hmm. some activity that, yeah, helps you to relax um, with your hands to then simple shapes, plain colors. Mm -hmm. um, so basically I made the drawing on the canvas mm -hmm. and then we choose the colors together and then she painted all. Another idea of the work was also having this model, very repetitive size, but make each painting very different, referring to different palettes, and we talk a lot about decoration and styles, you know, involving all these different decades that, that we were referring. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have a fight between the colors? Um, no. and do you guys are get, yeah, okay, you guys get along, that's great. <laughs> fantastic. Um, I, really, I really love um, the process of mm -hmm. this collaboration is, that you know, you choose the size and you choose the the kind of the the process to fit into the physical condition of your mom, and uh, it's it's kind of a quite interesting because typically sometimes with collaboration you start with a concept first, right? The artist start with a concept and then they go see yeah. the collaborator. But this is always almost a reverse in engineering as you invented invented a work so that you can collaborate with your mom, which mm -hmm. I really love that idea and that reminded me of, um, I'm thinking a lot about the logic of accommodation and thinking about being accommodating others in your work. It's actually this kind of a logic of accommodation is actually kind of carried through in many of your practice, which I, what I'd like to return to uh, in our um, next, in later in the conversation. Before I do that, I want to bring in to another agent or another collaborator in your um, practice, or at least in this particular theory, are the geometric shapes, right? Mm -hmm. And thinking about these geometric shapes in relation with the long history of concrete art, 
in especially Argentinian region right. and history. And uh, so how did you come up with these shapes and um, how do you see them in relationship with the con concrete art tradition in Argentina? Right. Uh, historical references of European abstraction and concrete art in Argentina started in 1944 and divided in two major groups, right? We have yeah. Madi and Asociación Arte Concreto Invención. Mm -hmm. So these groups uh, worked in shaped canvas way before Frank Stella. Um, they were also interdisciplinary. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. Well, Rod Fools is one of my favorites. Like, they started the magazine, included not only visual arts, but also theater, dance, poetry, design, music, well, everything. And all these work were political, also related to Marxism. Mm -hmm. They used geometry or they wanted to use it for social change in theory. However, from the taste, they also, from the European tradition, they continue a lot of the racism, misogyny, and more and more problems that for me, they, that mine, and that mining with the good intentions, right? But what I like from Madi very much even though I feel the opposite from their manifesto mm -hmm. because they were essentialists, they, they believe in purity and they wanted to be heroes, basically. Mm -hmm. I think they will probably hate me, but they're, they're a huge reference to, mm. to this work, even though it's, you can't tell directly from the image, right? Shall we listen to the manifesto for a little bit just for yeah. the for our audience. It's very funny. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think the sound is on. Let's see. Yeah. You can't you can hear it? No, but it's okay. Um, oh. well at least I think some of us were able to watch it, the subtitle mm -hmm. for the non-Spanish speakers. Um, right. I think um, what does the, the tone of the kind of, um, even now I'm not a Spanish speaker, even just from listening to this manifesto, there is such an, um, they are, you know, this is a manifesto. They are yeah. promoting this. They are arguing for this, which is very, very different from the way you work, I think. Um, but there are definitely, like you said, there are definitely aspects of your practice are similar to the Mahdi movement and especially within the kind of relationship to the political activism and uh, mm -hmm. the kind of interdisciplinary approach that um, really kind of work against the media, modernist media specificity argument, which I think was a really good thing about Mahdi. Um, and also working together, right? They're a kind of a collective. They have so many artists are associated with the movement are working with each other and um, Mm -hmm. publishing together, writing. I don't know if they're writing together, but they're definitely yeah. working together. Um, but I think the most sharp difference is the understanding of shape, form, and color, right? Your mm -hmm. understanding of these um, elements are fundamentally different from the Mahdi group. And the focus of the Mahdi was really, um, I think, um, fund foundationally concrete emphasizing mm. on the object and the color themselves rather than what they're perceived to present. And it's mm. really about what the work is about, not really about the work, how the work express meanings, right? Um, uh, the work is a, really a result of the confluence of playfulness with, with geometric rigor 
and carries this theoretical legacy of universal constructivism, which I think that is coming back to your comments on essentialism. They believe that the fundamental elements such as line, shape, color, form, contains the universal truth. And um, because of that, it should and must connect to everyone. But you and I all know there is nothing true about being universal, right? Um, it's always social, it's always relational. We have to always negotiate all different mm. contexts. And I think that is the sharpest contract between your work and their work, uh, or yeah. that is one of, there's so many different <laughs> contrasts. Um, but yeah, but thank you for bringing that up. And I also want to bring up um, another aspect of the Mahdi, which is their, one of their signature, right? It's the irregular, irregular canvas and uh, irregular mm. shaped canvas. Mm. And when I'm looking at your work currently on the desktop, um, you know, you, I seen the pattern over and over and what things jump out to me is this black frame. That this black frame really frames this um, the work, and yeah. um, how I think Madi was really trying to talk about the limitation of frame, um, etc. Yeah. But I think you are intentionally using this black frame. So maybe you can tell me a bit more about these black frames and um, why you choose them. What are the significance, and what are you thinking about framing in large? Right. Yeah, all this talk about Madi, <laughs> basically in relationship with the series, is that these works are the first time I framed the paintings because I wanted to dialogue indirectly with this idea that Madi has against the rectangle. Mm -hmm. So, like you say, they think it was a limitation, and I wanted to make a composition using that limitation in favor of the figure. And mm -hmm. I was thinking about contortionists, you know, how they fix in boxes as a show, and how mm -hmm. it's something that extraordinary actually. And I was also thinking in a sort of design, a sort of logotype series of different bodies um, first, the project uh, was presented at Galeria Agustina Ferreira in Mexico, the whole yeah. series of 10 paintings. Um, that's the installation with, view. That's, yeah. that's the, the view. So, because with Agustina, we also thought about having a traditional show uh, that was disrupted in the opening by a performance. So we invited Argentinian artist Tobias Dirte, Tobias Dirti, and he played one of his characters, Victoria Susia. Mm. That's in the picture. Victoria went around the gallery, you know, cleaning the floor with clothes made of cleaning products. And then she was reading that giant fanzine uh, with se sexual content, uh, referring to sex workers. And then at the end, she broke the ceramic shoes uh, she was wearing. So I think it, it was part of the yeah, a project that involves thinking about bodies, but from different formats, including the performance too. I'm a big fan of Tobias' work. Yeah. Can you recommend? Yeah, I love it. It's pretty amazing. Um, mm. I guess, I think that, I think it seems like you really care about the context and how your work mm. is mediated and how the work is being perceived, right? Um, and, and that reminded me of um, one thing that um, when we first kind of uh, acquired your work, um, there is this um, proposal, which is kind of the way that you propose the work should be shown right. at the museum. So 
here again, okay, so we're looking at different kind of framing device, uh, framing apparatus, or you can call it a, pa a paragon, where the puppy murals, uh, <laughs> those so adorable puppy murals <laughs> are now reframing the paintings, the four paintings and right. turning the paintings into the eyes of the puppy. And um, so maybe tell us a bit more about um, your, the mural practice of yours and that in relationship with the painting practice and how, how you really think about kind of the framing practice as a whole, not necessarily just the context, but also like deliberately framing the objects. Mm. Right. So the puppy murals comes to play a similar performance that Victoria Susia did in terms of changing the white cube dynamics. You know, because the white cube kind of work as a pedestal um, for the painting. So I wanted to add humor and tenderness and, mm -hmm. avoid, and avoid call that idea that the work is autonomous of context. So mm -hmm. the murals also work by themselves because they can be used with other people's painting. Um, the idea it's like a model that is inspired by retrofuturistic architecture too, you know, with the rounded corners. You know, these are models you right. can find. Stack them. Yeah. And work in different buildings too. So it's like a... Like protection. a modular, <laughs> yeah. right, protection. Yeah, I think that, that brings back to um, kind of the logic of accommodation that I mentioned earlier. Mm. And I think um, even adding humor, adding tenderness, adding playfulness, adding this kind of a, I think sometimes you call it childish like kind of a palette into mm. the work itself is a way to not only obviously, you know, subverting the art historical kind of a seriousness of, um, so-called modern contemporary art, but also mm -hmm. is making the work more accessible. And uh, and I was digging mm -hmm. around a little bit on your website, which um, I encourage everyone go to um, download this power, um, PDF of your work. Mm -hmm. And uh, in here, I, I was very interested by these hashtags. Um, <laughs> It's really fascinating to me because, you know, you have like sexy metaphysics, utopia, you know, vegan, pink cube, furry, post-porn, all that um, decoration, yeah. right? All these are kind of uh, already a subgenre, like a subcultural genre that um, has its own mm. community. And uh, Sometimes it overlaps with contemporary art, but most likely not. And, um, you know, and then I started to notice the absence of the words like contemporary art or figuration or abstraction. Um, mm -hmm. I, I kind of uh, very interested in how your take on contemporary art and your take on painting as a practice as a whole especially um, because of your deeply collaborative practice. And I wonder how that kind of a collaborative practice has influenced you for you um, when you think about yourself as a contemporary artist. Right. Well, I think also painting is the way I, I learn from many other artists, like my mm -hmm. teacher from always like, Jana Eisenberg, you know, mm -hmm. uh, she has this program of art clinics where the, the most important part is the way we work as a group to question each individual practice. So we use like a collective mind to go deeper into what you wanna do with your work. Mm -hmm. um, the question is also, also very important in this method that she developed. And as a visual language, also painting is a set of tools 
you know, that goes beyond the technique and the traditional genders and the classification of art, even. Mm -hmm. For me, also, it's a platform to experiment, you know, with feminist queer approach. Mm -hmm. Like, I like to use uh, the theory, apply it uh, to, to painting. And like I said, yeah, it's not like limited. Mm -hmm. Like, we say also, it, it's the feminist queer thing is not limited to a type of product or a, a result in a sort of aesthetic, but it's in the process of self-questioning and trying to subvert all those values that the art system implies. Mm -hmm. you know? So in this sense, I, I follow many other artists mm -hmm. as references, uh, mostly between abstraction and gender theory. I love the work of Mariela Cafati, Ulrich mm -hmm. Mueller, and also Madeline Jimenez Santil. Mm -hmm. She's the best. <laughs> and um, yeah. painting is a community in this production. You know, um, community is a word that is overused, but. <laughs> Which is also a theme of a Guggenheim circular. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's important. It a lot really, of artists are, yeah. But it is. I think it's the, all the lying about the crystal tower, you know, the artists over there, like a genius. Like, no, it's, it's all this. Uh, yeah, it's community. Mm hmm. I also want to recommend a piece of uh, the performance lecture that is online called An Alternative History of Abstraction by Manuel Arturo Abre. Yeah, I actually found it. It was fantastic. I spent... It's amazing, right? Yeah, I think I, yeah, I'm not going to, they're not going to be sound, but I think it will be even nice just kind of look at it. I, I so it's on it's on Vimeo so people can yeah definitely feel free to watch this I yeah no thank you so much I think we're just about the time to take some questions so if you're watching live please mm. um type down your question through the chat and my colleague will communicate it to us and we will read your questions Okay, great. Okay, we have one question. Um, are you still collaborating with your mom? Sorry. Can you hear me? Are you still yeah, yeah. collaborating? <laughs> are you Sorry. still collaborating with your mom? No, because we did other work, but in other series, well, drawings and stuff, but then now she's doing ceramics and okay. she's also working uh, in the house you know painting and uh, doing some working in the house <laughs> yeah and, like fixing stuff that's fun that's great I, <laughs> she she become her own artist she yeah. you know maybe one day you guys can work on something ceramic could be cool <laughs> just an <a> idea <laughs> okay we got another question uh, hi, Ad. Can you talk about the work you're making now in the COVID lockdown? Well, I'm working a lot on Photoshop, actually. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm, I'm doing some drawings that we show online with Agustina, too, mm -hmm. in the last project she did online with around food and traditions many more stuff and mm -hmm. I'm also working in a show that's gonna be in September at Lisbon, Kunsthalle Lisbon in Portugal. Oh, nice. Wow. Yeah. So, so you won't be able to travel there, will you? I don't know what's going, what's going to happen. Like 
in theory, yes, because uh, in September it should be okay. But yeah, I yeah. I think maybe this question was also intended to ask if you find during the lockdown there is any limitation towards your practice. Um, I know you mm. at least cannot leave the country because Argentina is right. under the lockdown. So do, do you feel like you are coping with our situation, global situation now? I think in terms of work, many projects were canceled or to or postponed to next year. So the, the only problem is, is that I'm away from family and friends, even though I'm the, in the same city, like mm. they're not able to visit each other. But then I have two dogs that <laughs> make me feel like companion. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not alone. <laughs> no, that's, I think, yeah, I think it's important. Um, well, especially all of your work is working with other yeah. human or non-human. I think um, I can imagine this um, kind of, uh, solitude that is coming through. But, uh, okay, we have one more question. Um, how is abstraction is used to explore social themes such as feminism in your work? Well, for me, it's like, like I say that it's a tool that I can use all the references to art history to kind of make different stories, you know, I think it's being used to build an alternative and speculative fiction in terms of what happened if this Madi work is in a bathroom, you know, taking a bath instead of being like an art piece. Or now I want to do a series of paintings, like, you know, being with flowers or drinking mm. tea or just relaxing, but also using image from vintage illustrations and from other artists that also work a lot on tenderness and, and childhood aesthetics too. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it works for the collage, you know, mostly. Mm -hmm. um, I think we are about time. So I, if there's no more question, I probably gonna wrap it up. I hope you all, thank you so, so much for your joining. Thank you so much, Ad, for spending thank time you. with us thank this you. afternoon. So and uh, of course, um, I hope one day soon, we will be able to show the work with the puppy murals in the Guggenheim galleries. And uh, I, I hope you all enjoyed our conversation. If you like the content, please subscribe to our channel for future episodes. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>